Hello Year 8s and welcome to Book Blast. In the next 10 minutes I'm going to be talking to you about five authors that you will find on the Waden ebook platform and I'll be finishing up by giving you a few really great Twitter and web links that you might find interesting. As you guys are now heading towards Year 9, I'm going to concentrate more on authors that are generally found in Key Stage 4, but they're also really well known for being transition authors writing contemporary fiction. All of these books are available to read on the Waden ebook platform and for those of you who are not familiar with it, this is what the site actually looks like. Um, you can see this is our homepage. If you scroll down, you'll see we've got books for Key Stage 3, books for Key Stage 4. There are general topic areas and there's also a great section on audiobooks. There are a lot of books that are available in audiobook format, so do give those a go as well. Um, your parents were actually sent instructions on how to download the app if you haven't already done so. They were sent home before we went into lockdown. But if any of you are having any problems, please let me know and I will send you the step-by-step -step instructions. The app can be downloaded on your iPads, on your phones, on your laptops, on any mobile device basically and it's very, very simple. So without further ado, I'm going to go on to our first author. And the very first one I'm going to talk about today is Lisa Williamson. This is an author you may or may not be too familiar with because she is predominantly located in Key Stage 4. Um, she has three books in the ebook platform. She's got The Art of Being Normal, All About Mia, and this book, Paper Avalanche, which is the book I'm going to speak to you about today. Um, this is a book about friendship, it's about family. Um, it also touches on mental illness because Rose's mum is a compulsive hoarder. I'll read you the blurb just to give you a rough idea of what it's about. It's billed as being pacey and instantly absorbing. Rose's mum is a compulsive hoarder. Their home is a horror show. So Rose become an expert at hiding. Hiding from social services, from friends, from having any sort of normal life. Until Tandy turns up and Rose's carefully constructed walls start to come crashing down around her. As sometimes it takes a real friend to show you who you really are. Um, it's a really interesting book that makes you think. You kind of imagine yourself in that scenario. What would you do and how hard must it be to kind of almost be leading a double life? But Lisa Williamson is actually an extraordinarily great author and she really does put you right in the mind of this young girl um, who is in secondary school. So you can imagine you guys are in secondary school. How hard is it to construct a totally different persona? Um, and how long is it sustainable? But it's a great read, guys. Lisa Williamson, superb author. If you've enjoyed this, have a look at some of the others on the ebook platform. Now, the next one I'm going to look at is um, Kathy McPhail. Now, she has got loads of books on the platform, and you probably have come across her name before. Two of the best on the platform are Devil You Know and Between the Lies. Um, this is Between the Lies, and it's the one I'm going to talk about today. It's billed as being Gone Girl for Young Adults. And it's about the power of social media, um, which we are all using now more than ever because we're in lockdown. It's the only way we can really communicate with our friends and lots of our family. Um, what happens in the story is a girl goes missing. Um, and as you can imagine, imagine it happened at Waden. The girl goes missing. It's a really big secondary school and social media blows up with speculation. Where's she gone? What happens to her? The girl gone missing is a girl called Judith Tremaine and she's one of the popular girls in the school. But suddenly one day, um, Abby, who is a girl, quietly goes her own, well, about her own business at school. Nobody really knows very much about her. She's very much a loner. A text pops up on her screen from Judith. And this text says, I want to come home. It's a great mystery. And it has you questioning at every turn. But it also has you asking yourself questions. What would you do if you received that message? Abby's not popular. Judith's the most popular girl in the school. What does Abby do with the message? Would you have done what Abby did with it? A great mystery and a really, really good read. So give it a go, guys. The next one I'm going to talk about is a really great American author who is very popular right now. His name is Jason Reynolds. He has won a lot of awards in America. Again, he's very, very active on Twitter and he has a great sense of humour. So if you want to have a look at his website, he is absolutely, he's, he's very, very funny and a really, really great guy. So the book I'm going to talk to you about today is, um, there's two books on the ebook platform. The first one is A Long Way Down. That was shortlisted for Carnegie last year 
and won lots of awards. But the book I'm going to talk to you about is called The Boy in the Black Suit. Um, most of um, Jason's books are set in the projects, are set in inner city in America. Um, they are really quite gritty reads, but the characters that he writes about are brilliant. Um, and really, really, they're really likeable. And you kind of really understand what they're going through because he writes their scenarios and their backgrounds so well. Um, Matt wears a black suit to school every day. His mum has just died. He doesn't wear it because his mum has died. He wears it because he works in the local funeral parlour. He needs to earn some money. He's at school, um, but he wants to earn some money. He lives with his dad and they're actually struggling to make ends meet. So it pays better than working at McDonald's. So he goes to work in a funeral parlour and there he meets a whole different group of people. People that have also gone through loss like himself. But it's not a sad book. It's a really uplifting title, has a lot of humour in it. And again, as I said, very contemporary, quite a gritty read, but definitely worth giving it a go. So I would have a look at Jason Reynolds. As I said, he's um, won lots and lots of awards recently. So definitely well worth having a look at him. The next author I'm going to look at is a lady called Susan Nielsen. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of We're Made of Molecules or Word Nerd or My Messed Up Life. The one I'm talking about today is called No Fixed Address. This was long listed for Carnegie this year. Um, it didn't make the shortlist, unfortunately, but it's a great read. And it's a read, uh, it's about homelessness. Again, it's set in America and it's about a young lad called Felix and his mum, Astrid. And the different thing about them is they're living in a van, but nobody knows it. So if you can imagine how difficult it must be to basically be living in a van and hide it from all of your friends. I mean, is this in the blurb? It has serious downsides. There's no privacy, no heating, no space, and worst of all, no bathroom. So how do you deal with this? How do you get yourself out of that scenario? It's not as grim as it might sound. It's actually a fantastic story told with a lot of humour. And um, Felix is a really likeable character. Uh, written really, really well. So give that one a go if, it's, if you're interested in it. Final one I'm going to talk to you about today is a horror story. So I know that you will love your horror stories. This one is called Fur and it's by Sharon Gosling. It was on the HBA Awards a couple of years ago in 2017, um, 2018, sorry. And it, um, it is actually quite creepy. It carries a warning on the back, warning not for younger readers. And it's published by Red Eye Books. Wherever you see the Red Eye Books, they're usually they're thrillers or horrors, and they are actually really very well written, unput downable, very creepy books. I'm gonna read you the blurb, just give you a sense of what it's about. We are the trees, we are the snow, we are the winter, we are the peace, we are the rage. Cut off from civilization by the harsh winter of Northern Sweden, the Stromberg family shelter in their old plantation house. There are figures lurking within the ancient pine forests and they're closing in. With nothing but four walls between the Strombergs and the evil that's outside, they watch and wait for the snows to melt. But when signs appear that an even greater danger is about to strike, it becomes harder and harder to distinguish reality from illusion. All they've got to do is stay sane and survive the winter. So that's fur by Sharon Gosling. And that's the last of my books. That's five and five. So to finish off, guys, um, as promised, I'm going to give you a few websites and a few Twitter links. So first of all, for those of you who love the Young Samurai series and Hostage series by Chris Bradford, and a lot of you have read this, check out his website um, because he has um, his YouTube channel. You can get to the website and the links to the YouTube channel. He actually offers a virtual author visit. So you see him talking for about 40 minutes about his books. Um, the great thing about it is it's very interactive and it includes a real life samurai sword. It's brilliant, well worth checking out. Um, so do give that one a go. For the Skullduggery Pleasant fans among you, and I know that you are really enjoying this series, the latest book, Bedlam, is on the ebook platform. So go to skullduggerypleasant.co.uk. Um, Derek Landy runs lots of competitions and lots of updates on what's happening with the series and the characters. That's definitely well worth having a look. And finally, um, I know a lot of you have read Murder Most Unladylike. Now, the final book is out this year. Um, if you visit robinstevens.co.uk for updates on this final book, but also she is very, very busy on Twitter. So if you get the link from her, if you're on Twitter, get the link from her website 
to her Twitter site, she actually really interacts quite well with people who want to comment about her books. And the latest question she's asked is for those of you who have read the eight books in the series so far, what have you liked most about the books? She's very interested in hearing from you, what you think about them and what are they actually meant to you. So have a look at her website, go onto the links. Um, most importantly of all, guys keep reading, reading for pleasure and keep on quizzing and stay safe.